Our Story Productions presents Cooking It Up with Betty, a saucy look at our story. So, get ready for the one and only Betty Thompson. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking It Up with Betty. And what a show we have for you today. Not only are we making a very special dish, we're also having a very special guest, and we'll have those reports from our roving reporters that find out what's cooking in our story country. So without further ado, let me welcome my guest, the one, the only, Elmer Plow, right here from Sweet Flying County. Welcome, well, Elmer. Thank you, thank you, Betty, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, I'm so glad you finally decided to join me. After all, you have been one of my special test testers for a long time well, with my uh, cooking, you know, and all really, of those blue ribbons we've been winning out at the fair. I am really happy to be here today, and I just kind of looking around, you know, I used to be the safety officer here at Sweet Swine County, and I'm kind of wondering if your kitchen is up to code, is there the wiring okay and the plumbing, you know, that could be kind of dangerous in a um, kitchen. What code, the safety code? Um, well, that would be Cousin John's area, uh, you know, this is his building. <laughs> um, the only code I'm really aware of is the good cook code, and that says, you know, you should make food that everybody likes. Delicious food. Now, I have a group of reporters out in the field, and not only do they go to big restaurants, they go to small, out-of-the-way restaurants, and they find out what's cooking in our story country. And then they report that back to us. Let's look at a couple of those reports right now. Abby Appetite on the road, checking out what's cooking in our story country. And I found a fiesta for the senses at this colorful Mexican restaurant. And remember, you're traveling with an appetite. Abby Appetite. Olé! Esterville, Iowa is quite different from Mexico in just about every way. Except one. Iowa people love Mexican food just as much as their neighbors further south. Growing up in Mexico, Isidro Pena probably never envisioned living in the frozen Northland as a boy. But his career path led him to Esterville, where he lives with his wife and children and owns and operates Don Jose's Mexican Restaurant. Specializing in authentic Mexican cuisine, Don Jose's is a treasure of mouth-watering entrees in a great, relaxing atmosphere. Open daily, Don Jose's has daily food and drink specials to please the pocketbook, and a friendly staff to make your visit a memorable experience. Guests commented that Esterville is a small town, so we are especially blessed to have a restaurant like Don Jose's. Great atmosphere, friendly service, and a full, authentic menu at reasonable prices. All make for a wonderful dining experience. They love the food, and so did I. I would highly recommend Don Jose's Mexican Restaurant for dine-in or carry-out. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Select the toppings, pile on the cheese, and when all is said and done, the only leftover in sight will be I. Lenny Leftover. Teresa and Dale Johansson are enjoying their latest business venture, Johansson's Cafe and Pizzeria in Armstrong, Iowa. And according to Teresa and Dale, business is booming. Johansson's Cafe and Pizzeria opened in the former Dryer's Diner by a husband and wife team from Sway City with a long history in food service. From big corporations to operating their own bakery for 15 years. While working as a cook, Dale and Teresa met. It wasn't long before Dale expressed his desire to move back to his hometown of Sway City, Iowa and open Johansson's Bakery. After 15 years operating the bakery, Dale worked at the Main Street Pub and Grill in Bancroft, but it didn't fulfill his need to create his own recipes. Dale's desire to create his own menu spurred the couple to open the Johansson's Cafe and Pizzeria in Armstrong. Specializing in cheesecake, there is usually one of over 50 different flavors on the menu. And if you're like me, you'll love Johansson's Pizza. Featuring a traditional crust with nearly any topping choice available, Johansson's Cafe and Pizzeria does pizza and cheesecake right. Wow, now those are some great places to eat, Betty. And you know, speaking of eating, what are we cooking today? 
<laughs> well, of course we're going to be cooking today, Elmer. Uh, but first, you know, uh, you don't always have to use the oven. Let's put your apron on here and okay. let's get started. Let's see what we got here. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess that's not, not going to work very well. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, well, just <laughs> try this wine. This is from High Horse. You know, Elmer, you don't always have to use the oven when you're, when you're cooking. We'll be making Chicken Jubilee Gelatin Salad. Jello salad? I thought we were going to make an exquisite dinner. Oh, oh, I know, I know. There must be something wrong with your oven, Betty. Elmer, Elmer, no, there's nothing wrong with the oven. It's just that, you know, sometimes a homemaker wants to have a cool main dish, you know, rather than heating up their whole house with the oven. Today, I'm going to be making a very special, and it's not jello, it's gelatin. How many times do I have to tell you? Gelatin, not jello. And this main dish salad that we would be making is called Betty's Chicken Jubilee. Just sit there and drink your wine, and I will get started. In the meantime, let's go to another report from our roving reporters of what's cooking in our story country. Lenny Leftover on the road, checking out the dining options for this special report of what's cooking. The food was so great, the only leftover in sight was I, Lenny Leftover. Mmm, mm, good. I asked Troy Menke, owner of Pillars Pub and Eatery in Jackson, why did you name your restaurant Pillars? Troy said that the restaurant was formerly the United Brary Bank Building, and the ornate classical stone pillars of the building's front were the inspiration of the unique business name. As you can imagine, it took a bit of work to transform a bank into an eatery. But Troy and his wife JD, both of Jackson, had a vision of what it could be. What he had hoped would be a month and a half project took a bit longer, but the results speak for themselves. Pillars serves the best in burgers, pasta, seafood, and appetizers for lunch and dinner. But Droy recommended I try oysters on the half shell and his 16 ounce T-bone steak. I enjoyed the friendly atmosphere and courteous service at Pillars as well. All you can eat Saturday specials like shrimp, pasta, or fish We'll keep this reporter coming back for more. With a full-service bar and outstanding menu, Pillars Pub and Eatery in Jackson is a perfect relaxation destination. Howdy, partners! Abby Appetite here to fill you in on what's cooking in the heartland today. You know, there's nothing I like more than good, stick-to-your-ribs, down-home cooking. You won't forget your appetite, because you're traveling with Abby Appetite. Mmm, doggy! Do you have a hankering for great ribs? Well, then mosey on down to Marshall, Minnesota, and stop by the Hitching Post for the best ribs around. The Old West is alive and well at this bar and eatery. Why, that's why folks come from miles around to enjoy the atmosphere, food, and friendly service. As customer Megan tells us, amazing! I just ate at the Hitching Post today for lunch, and the chicken focaccia was amazing! I had one of my better service experiences there as well. My waitress was very friendly and was extremely fast at getting to my table to help me with anything I needed. I look forward to next Wednesday when I'm meeting my friends again for lunch. Famous for their ribs, the Hitching Post also has great steaks, sandwiches, and homestyle desserts. Mmm, mmm, smoky tender ribs and that large slice of homemade chocolate cake. Mmm, I was a hog in heaven at the Hitching Post. I loved the Western Bar atmosphere, and the prices weren't bad either. The Hitching Post is worth a stop if you're in Marshall, Minnesota, and hankering for some good eating. <laughs> Wow, were those some great places to eat in? That food looked great. Man, I really would like to go out to eat, Betty. But uh, well, I see you're coming along really well here. Okay, yes. And uh, what I've done so far is I've prepared all the vegetables and cold chicken, and okay. I've put it in with the gelatin. Would you like to stir that I'll for me? Stir and then that we'll get it. For you. We will get that all stirred up. Then we'll add a little sour cream to give it some extra flavor. And once we have that done, we'll put it into our mold and we can let it sit and then we can unmold it for our supper. How are we doing there? Okay, I think we're doing okay. Ooh, that's looking good. Yeah, all right. Wow, okay, let's add the sour cream now. Okay. And you can stir that in. 
Okay, here we go. Just stir that in until it's kind of mixed up. You know, this is a great dish to serve like in the summertime when you want, and you can do it ahead of time and then you're sitting out on the patio and you just bring it out and you're all set to go. So it'll set up in a couple of hours and it'll be ready to go. Oh, you know, I don't know if I turned off the range. Let me check that. Oh, well, that, that's never happened this before. This is definitely an electrical <laughs> problem. We need to deal with this, Maddie. Oh, Elmer, Elmer, you still there? You still there, Elmer? I'm I here, can't. I'm here. Uh, well, thanks, folks. I think we're out of time, and we're definitely out of light. <laughs> uh, thanks to my special guests, thanks to my roving reporters, and thanks to you at home. Please come back and see me next time. I hope you can see me next time. Bye.